Hi there, Marina Newington, founder of Power System. How are you? I help entre entrepreneurial women turbo boost their productivity so they can have more time and financial freedom. So how are you doing today now that the weather is no longer sunny and glorious? I don't know about you and where you are, but I'm gonna be really English and talk about the weather for a second. So um, the weather here has been off the hook stunning. It is the most beautiful May that I have ever experienced after uh, 20 years of living in the UK. And it's really felt Mediterranean, it's felt sunny, and um, I think it's lifted a lot of our spirits because if you're forced to be at home and uh, in this lockdown situation, if you can go into your garden, go outside and have sunshine, it's just you know, very revitalizing. So um, I come to the beginning of June with lifted spirits, and I hope you do as well. And the beginning of the month always means um, reassessing my monthly plan. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So today we're gonna cover monthly planning 101. And I love planning. I'm actually really excited for this topic. I'm really excited to talk to you about this because this is just, um, one of the tools that I use that um, really helps me see results. And I know that if you follow this, then you will get results as well. Now, I wanna to talk to you a minute about systems. So back in the days when I was a health coach and I studied health coaching, um, I used to talk a lot about bioindividuality. So the idea behind that was that one person's bliss was another person's poison and there's no such thing as a one size fits all diet. So, you know, I may be great with carbs and gluten, but another person is gluten intolerant, they can't eat. You know, there is no one system. Um, but there are several guiding principles that everyone can apply while they work out what the right system is for them. So for example, you should fill your plate 50% uh, full of vegetables at a meal, okay? There is no eating system that's gonna disagree with that. So I feel that planning is similar in the sense that there is no one size fits all planning system. And the last thing I wanna do is dissuade you from using a planning system that you already use and you think that works for you. I think it's great if you found something that you like, but there are certain principles um, behind planning that we should all do in order to move ourselves forward and to work productively. And that's the sort of thing that I wanna share with you. And I wanna specifically share one element of that today, which is the monthly planning. So as in all things, we have to take a step back before we take a step forward and look at first, what are the goals that we set for the year? So let me ask you this, back in January, did you do an annual plan where you set um, the goals and targets and um, revenue expectations that you have for the year? If you didn't, don't worry and don't panic. Um, it is only June and we have six months to go before the end of the year. So if you haven't done this yet, then um, you can do so now for the next six months. Um, it's a bigger topic to talk to you about how to do that, but you can, you know, look at the next six months and um, set what your main goals are, what you want to achieve over the next six months, and then break that down into what needs to happen in each month in order to uh, realize those goals. So if you did do your annual plan, yay, well done. And this is a great time to take take stock and see how things are going because we are halfway through the year. So where are you with your goals? Where are you with your targets? Are you achieving them? Do you need to retreat, um, excuse me, retweak what is happening over the next six months? So once you set your goals and once you have a plan for the year, what I do is I then write down top level what I need to do for each month, what I'm covering in each month. So for example, in June, um, let me see my top level because I have a wonderful blog explaining all of this to you. Um, my top level tasks for June were list building, course creation, and to complete outstanding coursework. So, um, 
I have certain months where I'm trying to um, launch programs, um, promote things. Other times are for content creation and for just delivering value like I'm trying to do now. Hopefully I'm giving you value. Um, so each month has different things. So I look at what I'm supposed to be doing in June and then I take a pad and paper you know, I'm old fashioned, you can do it on your computer if you want, and just take 15 minutes, this is step one, okay? Take 15 minutes to just brainstorm what it is that you want to get done in this month. All right, so take 15 minutes and write down what you think are the big tasks, the big objectives that you want to get done, and keep in mind your big topics for the month that you want to do. Okay, so once you've brainstormed everything, then I want you to group everything into four topics, not more. Three to five topics that you're going to have as a three to five things that you're going to work on over the next month. Okay, so for example, um, given that my overlying topics were um, list building, course creation, and complete outstanding coursework, after my brainstorm session, um, I got to uh, courses, content creation, business development, and health family. Now, I always have a health family section because um, I always have my own personal goals dealing with my own health and wellness. So whether it's um, steps or exercise or diet, you know, whatever it is that my personal goals are. And um, I also have all the things that have to do with my family because I have four kids and that is a lot of stuff and it requires a category, I'm afraid, because that takes up a lot of my time. So we live a full life, a rounded life, and business, it's a whole life. And as an entrepreneur, a lot of us became entrepreneurs to have that time freedom in order to be able to run our business while we have our lives. So I have to acknowledge that life when I'm doing my plan because um, that is a big part of what I do and why I do it. So now that you have um, done your brainstorm and you know what your main topics are, it is time to get writing and it is time to get going. So I'm going to show you my planning board and I'm going to talk you through this. Okay, so here is whoop, technology here. Here is my board and I use a whiteboard. Okay, very high tech stuff here. Now, like I said at the beginning, there are lots of systems that you can use. There's Trello, there's Asana, there are all sorts of time management systems. I'm kind of old fashioned and I like using just a basic system that I can have next to me, see, and I'll explain to you in a minute. It's very um, technic, you know, I move things around, I have sticky notes, and there's also a system of reward built into it. And I think it's really important to acknowledge the work that you have done and appreciate yourself, okay? So, oh, I didn't bring my jar in, okay. So, looking back at my board, if you look here, you will see at the top of June, I have my main topics, which are courses, content creation, development, then split my board into um, three sections, which is to do, in progress, and completed. Okay, so three sections going down. And then I have sticky notes, which, um, which each one of those sections, and I move them along as I go through the month. As you can see right now, everything is in to do because we just started the month. I have a couple of things at the um, bottom that are in progress, but mostly it's all in to do. So this is the very basic system behind the monthly planning. And I'm just gonna explain it a little bit, but it is a very simple, simple, simple system as you can see, but it is so effective. So um, each of these sticky notes, um, they represent, um, I use different colors to um, symbolize the different sections at the top, right? So, um, for example, under, under um, development, I have sticky notes that all talk about tasks that I need to do that take no more than two hours. Okay, I put things into two hour chunks and not more than that because then it becomes too difficult to do. If the task requires more than two hours, then I break it down into two different sticky notes. So for example, I have um, 
newsletter for um, the 4th of June and the 11th of June. So I do a weekly newsletter. Um, if you're not on my list, please do join. Come on my website, marinanewington.com, and you will see loads and loads of fantastic free resources. You click on any of them, you can join my email list. But um, I do a newsletter uh, every week, and in order to write out the newsletter, I have to put that into my calendar because this is an activity I need to do. I need to write out my blog. I need to write out the outline in order to film my weekly live, and then I need to put the whole blog together. So all of this is tasked under this one section because this is just one section under content creation of things that I do. I then have other areas. So at the bottom here, I want to point out in family and things like that, I have my son's birthday. So I have my son's birthday. I have Father's Day. I have um, get cake and decorations to celebrate the birthday. I have um, I have get presents for my son and organize whatever. I've already done two lockdown birthdays, so um, I may have to do another lockdown birthday. We'll see how that goes. But those are tasks as well that are important in my life um, and they count as well. And I have to see how um, I can fit them in. So I put in all my to do's based on only those things that I have focused that I am focusing on this month. OK, then I move them across to in progress and then finally to completed at the end of the month. Um, is everything getting completed? Of course not. OK, let's be real. But what's interesting is what is not an incompleted. So a lot of the things will have moved across. All right. And then it's interesting to see what areas did I not work on? Because this is something I do at the end of the month then. And I try to do, um, so we shifted around a little bit as I took you to the board. I, I try to do an assessment to see what got done, what didn't get done, and why didn't I work on this? Because that feeds into mindset, which I'll get into in a second. So um, then here's the other really good bit. I take all these sticky notes that I have in the completed area, which I don't at the moment, but I will have them at the end of the month. And I can show you um, some pictures from other months um, of where it's over on the other side. Then I take all of them and I put them in a glass jar. I forgot to bring it in here today, but I have my glass jar that sits on my desk. And as the months go by, the jar fills up with my completed sticky notes so that I can see as I go through the year how the jar fills and all the tasks that I have achieved over the course of the year. So that's all the work that I've done. And, you know, whenever I think I'm not getting things done, maybe, you know, I'm not doing enough, I look at that jar and I know, you know what, I've actually done a hell of a lot of work. And so that's great. So that is something that reminds me to have some gratitude over what I've done. Now, last week I spoke about how gratitude can fuel productivity. I'll include the link to that in this. Um, but it's important to celebrate yourself and be appreciative of yourself for all the effort that you put in. Okay, it's really, it's so easy to beat ourselves up all the time. I don't do enough. I don't get enough done. Nothing's happening, you know, you actually do a lot and it's important to acknowledge it. So this is a really great system that I want to share with you on very simply how I plan my month and how I track my activities. Now, of course, other things come up and then I just add them to the board. You know, I add sticky notes and I'm in these colors because these are my favorite colors. These are my brand colors and you know, I'm a little funny like that. So I have my, my blues, my purples, my greens, you know, they look like my little power system flower. So, you know, I like the color coordination and I like that it aligns with my other business things. All these things, you know, they mean something and they do something. So um, if you have a system that you are using already, then I would suggest adapting this to the system that you already use. And the big key takeaways from here are you start at the top level. OK, you start at the top level first. You know, what's my annual plan? Um, what are the goals that I have for the whole year? It's so, so important to make sure to tie in each individual task 
to the goals that you have going forward because if they are not tied into your goals, okay, then they are just chores that you have to do and you may not want to do them. All right, let me take a quick moment here to talk to you about mindset. Now, you can have all the systems in place that you may want, you know, you can have every organiza organizational system going, you can have your goals, your tasks, you write your three things for every day, but you can come to your desk and say, you know what, I just don't feel like doing it. I just don't want to do it. I don't, I'm not in the mood. How do you overcome that? All right, now this is actually something that I am going to take care of for you. I am putting together a course, I'm very excited, on how to bust through those mindset blocks in order to get you as productive as possible. So watch this space, that's coming. But it's really important to acknowledge the mindset. And while I don't have the answer for you right now on how to bust through that right away, what I can say is that being aware of it and acknowledging it and naming it is already half the battle. So saying, you know what? I'm saying I don't want to do this. Why don't I want to do that? Um, what's stopping me? You know, and starting to acknowledge that that process is actually going on already deflates some of the power. But one of the great ways to take that that feeling away is to make your tasks tied into your goals. So if you have goals that you really want to reach, okay, you put in some stretching but attainable goals, okay, that excite you, all right? So for example, I want to create my digital course and launch it in October, all right? And it's about getting stuff done, all right? This is my goal and this is what I want to do. So what needs to happen every month in order to achieve that goal? Okay, I need to do the content creation and the business development relating to that in specific this month. So which of these tasks are going to relate to making that content development happen? Okay, the content creation. Ah, so I'm going to um, listen to Marie Forleo's B-School and Amy Porterfield's Digital Course Academy, which are two amazing courses that I signed up for. Um, to help me along and i think by the way amy porterfield and marie forleo are absolute goddesses and they are amazing so much wisdom so you know going through their courses and taking the actions is part of that um doing the course outline is part of that you know i have specific tasks that i can get excited about and i can want to do because they are taking me towards my goal if i have a random task that is just there and it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't take me anywhere. And it's, you know, follow up on LinkedIn messages, you know, you know, there's a reason that that builds up a little bit because, you know, it's not necessarily tied into what I think is the exciting goal. So the challenge is to tie these things into what are exciting goals. Okay. So wrapping up number one, set your goals for the year. Okay. What are your annual goals? If you didn't set them from January, not a problem. It's okay, don't panic. You have six months left of the year and you can get so much done. So take a minute and really think about what you want to achieve by the end of the year, okay? By December 31st, what do you want to say that you have done? Okay, don't pick too many things. Maybe three things, something that's going to generate revenue, something that's going to build awareness, you know, what, depending on your business, if you have a product, it's, you know, something relating to that. Um, so pick a few goals that you want to happen, set targets in order to be able to measure those goals. You know, we talk about smart goals. That's a different um, thing. I can talk to you about that on a different episode. Um, so set yourself targets and then break it down by month. What are you going to do each month in order to see those goals happen? Then when you get to the end of the month and you have time, you make time, you take a two hour block. I do a two hour block at the end of the month, um, but it's not too late on June the 4th to uh, do it now. And you do this monthly plan. And it sits with you next to your office space where you work, uh, next to your desk, and you move things along as you do them. And then when you're all done at the end of the month, you have several bits of great information. First of all, 
you see everything that you have done and you know what you have completed, you put it in a jar and you are able to celebrate your achievements, which is amazing. So yay in advance, okay? Number two, you're able to see what you didn't get done. And it is a great tool to be able to take stock and say, okay, these are the things I didn't get done. Why didn't I spend time doing this? Um, what did I work on instead? Is this still important? Is this something I need to do next month? Or is this something that in fact isn't a goal and isn't a priority for me? So it's a great way to reassess. Okay, so um, if you have a hard time figuring out what you want to focus on, I have an absolutely amazing free resource for you. It's called Six Steps to Turbo Boost Your Productivity, and I'm attaching a link to it here. And this is fantastic because it is a worksheet that's gonna take you through all the activities that you do, and it's gonna hone in and identify for you the 20% of work that you do that generates 80% of your results. Okay, then you are going to focus on working on that 20%. And that's what you're going to put down as your main tasks. All right. So please check out my free guide. It's absolutely fantastic. Six steps to turbo boost your productivity. And I would love to hear from you and get pictures of your boards and your planning. So please, please, I would love to see your pictures and your comments comment below, um, send your picture and I will get back to you if you have any questions. And of course, um, please feel free to ask me anything and I will get back to you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.